during class session they have to communicate practice yeah uh, because the idea is to get them prepared for uh, the global challenge so to speak but anyway uh, to today's topic is on okay can we go back to the to the uh, microsoft microsoft file yeah today's topic is on capital structure yeah capital structure and leverage So back in Malaysia, we, we have this smart board. We call it smart board. And we also have the white board. Because sometimes we discuss on the, um, on the slides. But at the same time, when we go into the detail, we also need the white board. Yeah? Especially when you deal with a topic like this, capital structure. Yeah? So do you know what capital structure is? Capital structure. How much do you know about capital structure? Why they call it capital structure? Capital and the structure. Okay, can we go back to the um, the whiteboard? Yeah, I call it the whiteboard. <laughs> yeah. Can you go back to the whiteboard? Because I like, I like to switch, you know, when I do my lecture, I like to switch my slides and the whiteboard. Yeah? So this is how I get the attention of the students. Okay? Because I do not want them to focus only on... Okay, so why I call it structure is because... I think this one is working. So... Yeah, it's like a house, yeah? but here, house with the pillars. I got three pillars here. Okay, so the house with three pillars. Okay, so basically, what those three pillars are doing to support the business. This is your business, the money. Okay. Okay, so the business is right on top. Okay, and you need to support this important business of yours. Okay, now, what does the business do? Yes, generating sales, yeah, and eventually you see profits. Yes. Okay, so basically sales is your main business, right? Yeah. So sales is your main focus. So what are the enablers of this sales? The three supporting pillars. The structure. Okay, capital structure. Because to start a business, you must have capital. Yeah, especially when your business is a big business like Pesero. Right? Uh, Pesero needs a lot of money, right? A lot of capital to start with. Okay, so basically tell me, what are the sources of capital? Very good. Debt. You can take debt. Okay, hutang. Yeah, hutang. Financing, yeah, you can take hutang, loan from, from your parents, from your friends, from your uncles, okay? But of course, we cannot rely on them, right? So, business do not involve 
personal money. Yeah. So you go to the bank or you go to Busa effect. Uh, okay? So one of the sources is debt. Yeah? So one of the pillars, debt. What about the other two? Hmm? What about this? Two. Stocks. Okay. Very good. But in finance, we call it e equity. Yes, equity. Equity. Yes. Yeah. So equity means you are getting the money from Busa effect. Or you, your company issue shares. Yeah, your company issue shares and then you get people to buy or invest. Okay? So equity debt. Okay, what about the third one? What about the third one? Interest. No. We are talking about source. Sumber, sumber, sumber dana. Sumber capital. Sumber modal. S. Debt. What else? Obligation. Obligation is debt. Yes. Retail. Who said that? Good. <laughs> Yeah. RE. What is RE? Yes, retain. Retain earnings. Okay? Retain earnings. So basically, these are the common sources of capital for. We're talking about big companies here. Yeah? Yeah? This business is big. Like a uh, listed company. Yeah? Listed companies. Okay. So the listed companies at Bursa effect. So it has to be listed, yeah? Then you have access to this, okay? Uh, if your, your company is small, like Pete, so most likely you cannot have access to all the three. So now you understand why company get themselves listed at Bursa effect, yeah? Uh, they want to get themselves listed at the stock market because they want access to the capital markets. Okay, access to this capital market. Now, my next question is, which is the cheapest source of capital? Yang paling murah daripada mana? Cost yang paling murah to raise capital. Are you sure? Huh? <laughs> Think again. The easiest, the cheapest, the fastest. Hmm? Are you sure that? You think it's easy to go to the bank? You go to the bank and then talk to the bank officer and in 24 hours you get your money? No. So, yang paling mudah, paling murah adalah, yes, this one, yeah. Retain earnings, the cheapest, yeah. Ni yang cheapest. Okay, cheapest and the fastest. Hmm. 
So that's why a company like Microsoft, eh? I think you know Microsoft company? Who owns Microsoft? Yeah, Bill Gates, yeah. So Microsoft started with only 50,000 US dollar. Now its value is billion US dollar. Yeah, value of company now billion US dollar. So how the company grow so fast the past 30 years? Retain earnings. Microsoft use retain earnings to expand the business. Uh, that is the power of retained earning. Okay? This one is very powerful, ladies and gentlemen. Very powerful. Yeah? Can we put color here? How do you put colors here? Is there any color here? No color? Oh, okay. So sometimes when you got color, it's more, you know, more interesting to put the notes. Okay, so this one they can, the student can, can, can keep the file. Okay, good. All right. Um, now, define retained earnings for me. Can someone here in this class define retained earnings? What is retained earnings? Huh? What is retained earnings? Hmm? What is retained earning? Hmm? Who is Muhammad here? Any Muhammad here? Raise your hand. I need to speak to Muhammad. Where is Muhammad here? There's no Muhammad here. Huh? Where's Muhammad? Where's Muhammad? No Muhammad. Wow, there's no Muhammad here. <laughs> oh, is it from the oh okay. Ah okay. Yeah, we got one Muhammad here. Yeah? Muhammad S. Munaldo. <laughs> Where is he? Oh, there you are. Now, help us. Yeah, what is retained earning? Yeah, you can speak in Indonesia, no problem. I understand. Bahasa Indonesia. Yeah. Hmm? Ah. Uh, return earning itu dapatnya dari keuntungan perusahaan yang di apa dipisah dari pro, apa dari pendapatan perusahaan. Nah, gitu. okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Muhammad. Very correct. Ya, yeah. so retain earning is company's profits after tax, not before tax, okay? Ya, yeah, retain earning is keuntungan syarikat selepas syarikat membayar pajak. Ah, ah. Jadi keuntungannya disimpan. Ya, yeah, keuntungan disimpan. Karena itu dalam Islam simpanan adalah sangat penting ya. Yeah. Ah, in Islamic principle saving is a must. You must save your money. You save your money? Huh? So, risky. Where are you, risky? Risky is missing. I got two risky here. Risky. Risky Shafira. Huh? Not yet. Okay. Novita. Where are you? Where are you, Novita? Huh? There you are. Okay, Novita, I need to ask you a question. Um, just now we talk about, just now we talk about retained earnings, yeah? And we talk about savings. Um, yeah. Why savings important? Uh, untuk jangka panjang, untuk kebutuhan jangka panjang, jadi 
Untuk jangka panjang, jadi perlu menyimpan uang gitu. Untuk uh, keuntungan faedah jangka panjang. Jangka panjang. Huh? Okay, very good. Yeah. Oh, how how do I do that? <laughs> yeah, mereka lihat itu. Direct, but I don't have the attendance. <laughs> how do I call them? Ah, okay. So, so sorry, yeah. You cannot communicate over there. But they can see me, right? Yeah, okay. Alright, so. Retain earning yang paling, yeah, costnya yang paling murah dan yang terbaik. Just now I mentioned company like Microsoft, yeah. Microsoft grew because of retain earning. Okay. Now, we got three sources. Which one is the most expensive? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Are you sure? <laughs> huh? The most expensive. Paling mahal untuk untuk di apa kita panggil tourist, ya. Yeah? This one, your money. So, of course, it's easy, right? It's your money. This one you have to go to the bank. This one you have to go to Bursa Efek. It's not easy to risk from Bursa Efek. Yeah, you have to deal with many parties. You have to deal with legal firm. Yeah, lawyers to do the draft agreement. You have to deal with government office, OJK and so on, right? You have to deal with investment bankers. You have to deal with government securities. A lot of paperwork. So this is the most cumbersome and the most expensive. But, but, this is where you can raise the biggest. Uh, even though it is the most expensive, but you can raise the biggest fund ever. Yeah. The biggest. Okay, you want to raise the biggest source of funding is from the Busa effect. Okay. A uh, good example is Facebook. Yeah, Facebook company they raise fund from New York Stock Exchange. Yeah, New York Stock Exchange. Okay, and this is the cheapest, the most expensive. So this one is right in the middle. But this is the favorite. Yeah, this is the favorite among business people. Debt. Yeah, debt. Why debt? Why people like debt? Kenapa manusia itu suka hutang? Hmm? Why? Well, that is normal, right? Yeah, as long as you have the capability to repay your debt, your loan, it's okay. Yeah, even in Islam, you are allowed to to borrow money, but you got to make sure you are able to repay your loan, your debt, borrowings. Okay? Now, and of course today, oh, now the time is? And then, then, no, I got one hour left. Yes. Then Q&A. Yeah. Or they have to go to... Must to give another class, another student to ask you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Or oh, I have to go there? No. You mean? Only, only here. here. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So we got one hour. Actually, I got a lot to ask you, you know. But anyway, I will share my slide with you. Don't worry. Okay. So why that is the favorite? That's because, yeah. This one is associated with a theory. 
there are many theory talks about that. Uh, so have you heard about this theory called static theory? Hmm? Never heard. Static theory. Hmm? Trade-off theory. Trade-off theory. Yeah. Trade-off. You can Google. Yeah? Trade-off. T-R-A-D-E. Trade-off theory on debt. So this theory talks about the good thing about debts. So when you take loan, you borrow money, yeah, there is a good element about it. What is it? Tahap keimanan meningkat. No. What is the good thing about taking loans in business? Hmm? Kevin, where are you, Kevin? Okay, Mr. Kevin, can you share with us? What is the good thing about debt financing, loan? Uh, untuk ekspansi bisnis dengan jangka waktu yang sebentar, jangka waktu yang menengah. Jangka okay. Ya, yeah, of course you have the option ya. Yeah. When you take loan, you can choose sama ada pinjamannya jangka pendek, ya yeah, sebulan, satu bulan, sembilan bulan atau tiga tahun atau tiga puluh tahun. Okay, so you have the option. Okay. Alright, one thing. This one has to do with pajak. Do you know that? When you take loan, you have to pay interest, right? Bunga. Yeah, faeda, right? So, do you know that that faeda, the interest on the loan is tax deductible? So, you took loan, you pay interest on the loan, right? So, that amount of interest you can put in your tax filing, you know. And you can reduce your tax bill. Ah. So when you take this loan, you are able to reduce your taxable income. You reduce taxable income, you will pay less tax. Kurang bayar pajak. Uh, that's why people take loan. Why people choose debt financing because of pajak. Uh, so that is the trade of theory. Yeah? The good thing is you can reduce pajak. Yeah, reduce tax. Yeah, you can reduce tax. But uh, but why they call it trade off? Trade off mean offsetting, okay? You gain, but you also lose. Okay, what is it they're going to lose? When you take your debt. Hmm? What is it you're going to lose? Hmm? Where's Natasha? Where are you, Natasha? Ha, Natasha, what is it you're going to lose? When you take debt, when you take loan. Betul. Very good. Exactly. Precisely. Okay. The problem with that is you would increase probability of bankruptcy. Uh, okay. You increase probability bankruptcy. Yeah. Bankruptcy. Huh? 
that is not good. Okay, so when you increase probability of bankruptcy, value of your company will be reduced. So you overexpose. So that is okay, the essence, the G's of trade-off theory. So you need to strike the balance, yeah? the balance between um, the balance between uh, cost of debt and benefit of debt. Okay, so this is the benefit. Yeah, and this one is the cost. Okay, the benefit and the cost of debt financing. Okay, any question with regard to capital structure? Hmm? Any question with regard to capital structure? Okay, so remember, yeah, structure means it's a house. Okay, right on the top, that is your business. Your business support your sales or create the sales and your business must be supported by these pillars. Yeah, the pillars provides the source of financing. UPNV Jakarta who support the financing of UPNV Jakarta? Uh, if you relate UPNV Jakarta with this model So, which pillar supports UPNV Jakarta? UPN V Jakarta. Who? Yes. Yeah. So, government. So, means what? Where is it? Yeah, equity. Yeah, equity. It's owned by government, right? So, equity. Yeah, equity. Okay, clear? Uh, Uni KL. My university, Kuala Lumpur, is owned by equity because it's owned by government. Yeah, so equity. Okay, no question? Okay, good. So how I'm going to erase all of this? So I take this eraser. Huh? So I have to go like this. Enggak ada yang bisa... Ya, yeah, habiskan yang semuanya. Ah, oh, okay. Oh, you got to put color here, right? Ah, okay, good. Okay, now there's another. <laughs> oh, nggak bisa kena bayangan. Oh, okay. Nggak bisa kena bayangan. Okay, zero. Okay. At one point here. Okay. So what is it all about? Okay, this one is... That over equity is value.
Oke. Oke. Oke, okay, value. We are looking at relationship between debt and value of the company. Okay, you can say this is the maximum, the maximum value, yeah? Okay. Okay. So, this two-dimensional plane graph, yeah, explain the relationship between value of the company. This is value of the company and they are debt equity ratio. Okay? The debt and equity ratio. Okay? Ah. So this is basically what the theory says. The trade-off. Yeah? So just now we talk about this, right? Trade-off theory. Okay. Okay. So the theory basically explain that when your company increase, when your company increase the level of debt, what happen to the value of the company? What happened to the value of the company? Okay. Say A, B. Yeah. What happened to the value of the company? Increase, right? They increase the level of debt. I mean that debt equity ratio increase. Yeah, you get to see the value increase. This is point C. Okay, value increase. Is that good? Yeah. Basically, that is what you want. Yeah, you want to move your company from that point to this point. Yeah, point C. Yeah, you want to be here. Why do you want to be at point C? Huh? Why do you want to be at point C? Kenapa point C is the hala tuju, destinasi, tujuan. Huh? Correct. Because that is the point value of your company is at the maximum. Yeah? Maximum value is here. Okay, so it's not very nice here. Okay, all right. So you want to be at this point because your company's value will be at the highest. Okay, so whatever you do, you have to make sure this ratio. Okay, what are those? What is the DE here? DEA. DEB. DEC. DE is debt equity ratio, okay? Uh, and do you know that the different industry have different setting, different DE? That equity ratio. So you cannot generalize. Yeah? Tidak boleh disamakan industri pangan dengan industri banking. 
right? Completely different sectorial properties, sectorial specific. Pangan, how big is the market? Who are the market? Who are the players? Banking, how big is the banking market? Who are the players? Yeah, different. So different industries will require different this one, debt equity setting. So that one is very important. But as far as as far as banking is concerned, yeah, if, kalau kita bicara pasal banking, don't worry about debt equity. Why? What is so special about banking? Bank, most of the banks, they are not worrying so much, yeah? DE. Because DE-nya di monitored, yeah? diawasi oleh central banks. Jadi mereka enggak bisa senang-senang, yeah? menukar debt equity, not that easy. Karena saya ada pre industry bank, yeah? saya tahu. Every day, the central bank will call us how much money you have. Every day before 5 o'clock. Before we close our bank, central bank will call and ask. And we have to report how much money we have, how much deposit, how much liquid asset, illiquid assets, yeah, government securities. Uh, so for banking, this one is not relevant. Yeah? Uh, but for other industries uh, okay okay so now going back to this graph right, it means what yeah, you have in a business you have to move from this point A to point C and you want to stop at point C yeah? because that is the point when your company is valued at the highest and if you are the CEO of the company that's where you should stay at point C because that's how you get your renewal right CO two years two years contract right ah. so you want to stay here every CEO of company they want to stay here because their job is to maximize value of the company ah. now the question is what is this ratio here how much is this how much? How much? How much? Is it? Is this? 0 0.9 Is it? 2.8 Is this? 3.2 We do not know. You have to do the research. I said just now, different industries, different sector, different ratio. Yeah? Aviation industry, aviation, you know aviation? Industry penerbangan, yeah? airlines. Airlines, definitely they have very high DE. Like Malaysia MAS, yeah? Malaysia Airlines. Problem. Because they cannot manage this. A Asia problem. Yeah, because of this. Even though you look at A Asia, you know, but A Asia is suffering. Why suffer? Because A Asia got huge debts. Yeah, they have huge this. A Asia got huge debt. And they also have huge equity. So, fly with A Asia to support. <laughs> huh? So, fly with A Asia to support the business. Yeah, airline is very challenging yeah, because they use high debt equity ratio. Okay? Uh, but if you are dealing with technology, uh, technology is good. Company based on technology, yeah? information technology is good. They are very much on labor intensive, specialized. Yeah? So they don't invest too much in fixed assets. Uh, it's 
So that's the beauty of it. Okay? And you do not want to, to go beyond this point C. You don't want to be at point D or point E and worse, point F. Yeah? Uh, you don't want to be here. This, that is a danger zone, you know. Let me see what color do I have here, this one. So you don't want to be here. You don't want to be here. Yeah? You don't want to be over there, beyond point C. Yeah? You go beyond point C, you're going to lose your job. Confirm you're going to lose your job. As a CEO. Okay? Simply because your value gives. Okay? So this is basically the G's of the trade of theory. Okay, clear? Everything clear on this? Uh, actually, in finance, uh, there are many, 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 many theories talking about capital structure. But because I only have one hour with you, this is my favorite theory. Yeah? But you can go and search other theory like, just to share with you, yeah? I think this one is a good theory. So another good theory called, so this is number one, right? You can read, yeah? you can find the Google, they talk about packing order. Packing order theory. Okay, packing order theory. Okay, what else? The famous one, trade off theory, packing order theory. Uh, market timing. Yeah, market timing theory. Uh, but this is the classic, yeah, classic one. Trade off is a classic. So the trade off theory is also known as static theory. Static. Some people call it static theory, some people call it trade off theory, but basically they are the same. Just the name, yeah. Change integrably from time to time. Okay. All right. Okay, question. Any question from, from you, ladies and gentlemen? Fira, where are you, Fira? Ah, any question? I'm going to have a quiz after this, okay? Ready for your quiz? <laughs> uh -huh. So who developed this theory? Who developed this trade-off theory? Now you can find the answer in Google, okay? Okay, Fira. Um, I would like to ask you. Okay. So, what is the cost of this, Fira? The cost of trade off theory. What is the cost? What is the disadvantage of this theory? Yeah. The limitation. Apakah masalah theory ini? I think it's about if the company cannot uh, pay off. Like bankrupt is easy. Okay. And then. So you're saying that uh, the theory highlights on the bankruptcy risk. Yes. Good. Correct. So this theory actually highlights the issue of bankruptcy. Eh? Yeah, uh, be sure of bankruptcy because it is much easier to be forced into bankruptcy when you are 
involved in this. Uh, okay, so that's why you can see uh, good companies. If the company are doing good, the first thing they are going to do is to reduce their debt. Yeah, quickly they reduce their debt, even though they know the debt can reduce their taxable uh, amount or their taxable income. But they also know inability to repay debt, they can be forced into bankruptcy. And what more if the debt is in the short term debts, not long term, okay, short term. Short term debts is more dangerous than long term. Uh, so you need to know also company's profile. Uh, when the company do business, do you think they put more debts on short term debts or long term debt or intermediate term debt? So it's not easy eh, to run a company. Eh? You got to know a lot. Liability management, asset management, cash management, sales management, yeah? uh, capital structure management. So this is part of the capital structure process. Okay, so how much time do we have? I need to stop at 10.30. 30 huh? 30 minutes left. Serious? Yes. Wow. Are you sure? Yes. What's the time now? 10 o'clock. So I got 30 minutes. Yes. Why time? The time is not on my side. <laughs> um, okay, sir. So can we go back to my, yeah, this one. Okay. So this is my note. You want this note? Of course, yeah. of course I will give this note to you. Okay, let's scroll. Can we scroll down slowly? Scroll down. Scroll down, up, up a bit, up, 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 going up, up, yeah, uh, naik ke atas, uh, okay, lagi, 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 stop, okay, so capital structure and leverage are closely related because they are two concepts linked to cost of capital, right, okay, I mentioned, okay, I think you know this one. Huh? Oh, cannot. I thought this one cannot, cannot. Oh, cannot, okay. Okay, capital structure, you know. Leverage. What is leverage? Huh? Leverage. This is the term used by the American. The American call it leverage. But... The British call it gearing. The same thing, okay? What is leverage? Uh, there. Leverage in managerial finance highlights result from the use of FC, fixed cost assets. Yeah, fixed cost asset or fixed cost fund. Okay? Uh, used to magnify return to the. So that is leverage. Yeah, when you are involved in fixed assets, fixed cost fund. So fixed cost fund is debt, right? Fixed cost fund is actually debt. Yeah, when your company involved heavily in debt and your company involved heavily in fixed assets. So that is the danger of this fixed cost asset. Give me an example. Fixed cost assets. Give me one good example of fixed cost assets. Fixed cost asset. Give me an example. Fixed cost. This one. Fixed cost asset. Huh? Yeah, asset. I want to know asset. Fixed cost asset. Building. Land. Yeah. Uh, building. Land. What else? Just now I mentioned about shipping business, right? Shipping business, airline business. When you are involved in airline business, you have to buy aircraft. 
aircraft is a fixed cost assets. One aircraft is not cheap, right? How much is one aircraft? Dollar. And do you know that this aircraft never skip? Do you know that? The aircraft that we flew never sleep. The pilot sleep. The air crew sleep, but the aircraft never sleep. The aircraft stops, change the crew, fly again. Stop, change the crew, fly again. You don't know that? Aircraft never sleeps. Pity them, yeah? I'm very pitiful to the aircraft. I wish the aircraft can speak. <laughs> yeah, they never sleep. They never rest. Why? Why? Why aircraft never sleeps? Because it is fixed cost asset. You have to use them. Maximize the usage. Ah. So now the coronavirus thing, right? What's happening now, the coronavirus is going to damage the airlines industry because now airlines, now the aircraft can sleep. <laughs> Correct. Yeah? Now the airlines can sleep, the aircraft can sleep because they cannot fly. Because nobody will accept. Yeah? Destination, especially China yeah, and some other affected countries. See? So, it's very important to understand the characteristic of your fixed asset. Whether your fixed asset has fixed cost character or non-fixed cost character. Yeah? Uh, what more? You need to utilize your asset. Okay? You need to utilize your asset and make sure your asset is able to generate income for you. Mm. Yeah? Uh. So, so, leverage will affect your business risk and also your return. Okay? And of course, increase in the leverage will result in increase in the level of risk and it has the potential to increase your return as well. Okay? Okay. So, here I put the example of Renong. Yeah? So, this company, this is a Malaysian company. Yeah, it used to be a one big Konglo company, but now the company is gone. Yeah, the company bankrupt. At one time, it's so rich. They got highways, they got shopping malls, they got hotels, they got refinery. Now, nothing. Uh, because of this, you don't understand leverage. Huh? Yeah, because I used to work with them. Yeah, it used to be my my employer, yeah. Renong. Okay, so I think I have 15 minutes. Now, I need to give you my quiz. Excel. Yep. Can you make it smaller? Reduce the size. Oh. Nggak bisa lihat pula yang ini ya. It's okay. Uh, go back to the original size. Okay, let's go through this. Uh, can you? Um, yeah, okay. Okay, let's quickly take a look at company. Yeah, this is real data. This is real data. This is the data financial information is real. From real company. But I changed the name of the company. To protect confidentiality okay but this is based on real data of a company now you have three important uh, template to look at yeah number one the company's performance the company's performance the company's liquidity and the company's liability and equity now look look at the sales Look at the sales. They are in million, yeah? million of dollars. So what happened to the sales? Yeah. Look at the sales. They're having problem there. 
They're having problem. If I'm the CEO, I'm not happy with the sales. And they look at the net profits. Look at the direct cost. Total direct cost. So the direct cost change also, but they are not changing much as compared to the sales figure, right? Hmm? This one drop. This one is good. Cost drop, very good. But cost increase, no good. Uh, cost increase. Uh, this one cost increase. Cost increase, 2018-2019, cost increase. But profit, I'm sorry, the uh, sales reduce. Profit, worse. Is this efficient? Is this company efficient? What should we do with the CEO? Yeah, change the CEO. The CEO failed to understand capital structure. Huh, how do you see the capital structure? Okay, you got retain earnings. Retain earnings is good. Is retain earnings good? Huh? Yeah, it's growing but slow. Right? So, see, slow. This one is okay. This one is very good. High growth, high, and then suddenly, see? Moving slow. Pak can, uh, yeah, escape. Because uh, you now you see the formula. Just, just press escape, Pak. Yeah. Ah, okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah, so, retain earning. This retain earning is, is from here, okay? Profit, this figure will go there. You see that? So you take this 1144849 plus 139, you get this figure. Okay? Ah. So that's why I said retain earning come from profits. Okay? The company is still making profit, right? But the profit level is reduced. Uh, significantly. <sighs> but the company got a lot of cash. See? What do you think? Yeah? See the cash amount? They got a lot of cash, you know? Yeah? They got a lot of cash. Yeah? And they also have financial assets. Yeah? They have financial asset as well. Okay, Pak, can uh, we go? Yes, thank you. Okay, look at the liabilities. Pak, lagi? Uh. Oh, that's all. Okay. Okay. Uh. Okay. Can you go to the analysis? The tab? Okay. Sana pak. Okay. Zinis liability. Yeah. See? The capital 30 million. Payables. Loans. So what do you think? Do you think that this company is at the verge of bankruptcy? Can the company go to bankruptcy? Can the company force into bankruptcy? Hmm? This is short term loan, yeah? This is short term. Short term loan. Right? Payable short term loan. Yeah? What do you call it in Bahasa Indonesia? Payable. Uh, huh? Payable. Panggil hutang. Hutang jangka pendek. Yeah. Short term, right? Yeah. In Malaysia, we call it permi hutang. Permi hutang. That means you borrow money from people. Uh, okay. Permi hutang. Payables. See? 
This amount is increasing, right? See? Ah. And then look at the loan. The government loan. Also increase. Okay? But the equity, only 30 million. So that means if you take debt equity ratio, if you take the ratio, yeah, total debt divided by total equity, definitely the ratio is very, very high. Right? Because the equity is very small. Yeah? This company asset is about 500 million. But their equity is only 30 million. So, my question to you, I got two questions. Analyze the company in terms of performance, liquidity, liability management. Is this company financially sustainable? Hmm. What do you think? So, after looking at the details, is this company financially sustainable? <laughs> huh? Why? If you say no, why? Hmm? What is the source of sustainability? What is the source of sustainability in a company? If you are running, managing a company, what is your source of sustainability? You, you know the meaning of sustainability? Huh? Kepercangan. Ketelanjutan. In bahasa Malaysia, we call it lestari. Kelestarian. Huh? Sama? Ah. Maksudnya, company-nya bisa pergi 5 tahun lagi, 10 tahun lagi, 20 tahun lagi. Ah. Alright. You think this company can go far? 5 years? Hmm? Why? Because uh, the equity ratio is too high. Okay, we already know. It's too high. Just true? Why is it too high? Because it's too high. Just true? Justru apa? Seterusnya? Justru dia nggak bisa bayar hutang. Jadi probability bankruptcy-nya udah? Yes, that's the word I wanna hear, okay? Ah, probability bankruptcy-nya udah tinggi. Jadi company-nya udah berisiko, right? Ya, yeah, gitu. Mantap. Ah. Okay. So now I have exposed to you one important knowledge today, which is the danger of debt. Bisa hutang, but you must be able to but the problem of this company, Pak, bisa yang sini, Pak. Tarik ke, ah. The problem of this company is, this is the source of sustainability. Okay, one more thing. The source of sustainability is your growth. Growth in sales. Kalau berniaga, pastikan salesnya terus. Yeah, begini naiknya, bukannya begini. Yeah, ascending, not descending, okay? Ascending, flying high, high, and high. This company flying low, 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 and crash. <laughs> Dangerous. Yeah? So, I'm a consultant to this company. So, I've written a report saying the CEO must resign. The CEO failed. To do his job. The CEO did not understand capital structure theory. 
<laughs> okay, because he is now exposing the company to this, yeah. See the see this short term debt, short term debt increasing. They should manage this. They should reduce this quickly. Reduce this. Yeah, they should reduce this one. Okay. And even this one too, yeah, the direct cost. Okay? So. Okay, any question on Zenith? So the important takeaway today is debt management. Number two, sustainability power. How you create sustainability power? You must make sure your sales keep on growing, flying higher and higher. Like Asia. Asia is flying lower and lower. So, fly with Asia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you fly with Asia? Don't, okay? You're flowing like this. So, you go with airline then, flying higher and higher. So, how much time do I have? I'm done? Done already? Yes. Huh? Not yet? How many minutes? Yes. 10 minutes left. Okay, 10 minutes. Q&A. Question and answers. Any question? You need to know about airlines business, university business, capital structure business. Yes, oh, you got another class? Maybe another Maybe class. Another class. But how, how do I, yeah, how do I communicate with them? I wish I can communicate with them, you know, they are looking at me, I feel so bad. <laughs> I can see them, but I cannot communicate with them. Yeah? But they can have my notes. Sampai? Mereka bisa tanya? Coba, Mas. Get someone. Huh? Yeah, can you ask question over there? So that I can hear your voice. Okay, okay, well, I, I, now I understand something, okay? You know what? When you do like this, you reduce cost. <laughs> right? Yeah. You pay envy is good. Cost. <laughs> yeah? I have three classes, same time, in one lecture. <laughs> yeah, you can reduce cost. Yeah, and then you create sustainability power. Okay, there you go. Nanti bisa di foto ya kita nanti ya. Saya mau tunjuk kalau di kalau lumpur masih belum ada lagi sebegini. Ya, oh. yeah, hebat hebat. Iya. Hah? Ini enggak dengar kan? Can I hear you? Siapa yang bisa nih? Itu lain kan? Oh, problem with the mic. Ah. Oke, <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Pakai phone aja ya. Dia punya ini kan? Tapi saya berbicara di sini, di sana dengar kan? Ya. Ah, okay, okay. bisa didengar mas aduh ya udahlah oke 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 Bisa, bisa, tapi enggak jelas lah. Ini bisa dengar, bisa dengar. Ah, aku tak sure banget. Kepala. Tiap bantu ya, apa dia sebut dengan apa? Apa? Mas, mikir jangan terlalu dekat. Sini, ambil sini. Okay. I want to ask you about capital structure. Okay. Prof. Uh, <laughs> sir, a uh, prof, what if a company doesn't have a big enough of return earnings or have a small amount of return earnings like PT Unilever Indonesia or Sampurna? Because their dividend payout ratio are always at 100% level and sometimes above 100%. So the question, so my question is, is it a business or not, sir? Thank you very much. More written earnings. Okay. So they can hear me, right? Okay, so the company Sampona have small retained earnings. Uh, is it good or not? Okay. Uh, like I said, yeah, sustainability power must come from sales. Right? Because later on the sales will be translated into profits. If, if they can cover the cost. Okay, sometimes they got sales but the cost is higher than the sales. Then it become... Losses, right? Uh, 
So basically, the small retained earning you must look at the trend. So that's why trend is under, is very important. You must understand. If you look at this company, look at the trend, retained earnings. Is it every year getting smaller, smaller, or smaller, or is still increasing but increase at slower rates? Ah. So this is why the the, 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 the principle of marginality is important. You heard about this? Principle of marginality analysis. Marginality analysis means you need to calculate increase in your retained earning every year. Like this. Yeah? You see Zenith? The retained earning increase every year. But, yeah, at the slower growth. So, we need to look at Sempurna. So, if Sempurna retained earning is growing, but at slower pace, still okay. Because that is a sign that the company has made profit. So, bottom line, the key is company must make profits. Because profit is the source of sustainability. Yeah? Uh, so, that is my concluding remarks. Okay, Pak? Jelas? Okay. Jelas. All right. Thank you. Okay, I think you got, you got another class, right? Okay, so again, thank you very much for your attention. I will share this note with you, okay? So come and collect. All right, thank you.